Well, praise God. Well, welcome to HBF. It is so good to be here. It's great just to see and hear all that God is doing. And uh, as uh, Tom mentioned, it's Discipleship Month, another great testimony from the Pew Gates and um, a wonderful song uh, this morning. Uh, man, God's already blessing. We could wrap it up and go home. But um, this month, as we focus on spiritual growth and the ministry of discipleship, um, I do believe it's appropriate, you know, to be starting this discussion on, on Mother's Day as we celebrate baptisms and new birth and spiritual growth and all those things that come with uh, nurturing and life that God gives us through the grace of God. It's, it's beautiful to, um, you know, to meditate upon those things as uh, mothers are used to bringing forth life and keeping things in order as the, as the world seems to spin out of control, right? They uh, keep everything together and uh, they occupy themselves with uh, caring and investing and nurturing and teaching and molding and shaping. And, um, and so uh, it's, a great, um, it's a great opportunity to focus on the need to nurture people in the word of God, whether it be our, our children, our grandchildren, uh, but most importantly as well, our spiritual children, which I hope all of our children become our spiritual children. That's our goal. And so it's appropriate and it's biblical to honor mothers, uh, just not on Mother's Day, but really every day. The Bible says in Exodus 20, 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And that commandment's mentioned nine times in the scripture, twice in the Old Testament in Exodus 20, 12, and once in Deuteronomy 5, 16, and then seven times in the New Testament. And six of those seven, te- uh, seven mentions in the New Testament ap- uh, appear when Jesus is discussing uh, the command and the subsequent promise, which is also mentioned in Ephesians 6, 2, a, a familiar passage to most of us, which says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. And then in parenthesis in the next verse, it says, this is the first commandment with promise, with promise of long life. And so this first commandment, this promise of blessing is a blessing uh, of long life and and of course, in the case of Israel, an entrance into the promised land and longevity in the land and in their inheritance. And of course, we have a, a even broader and a bigger and a more incredible inheritance through Jesus Christ. And, and all the things that we learn from our mothers and apply uh, in, in, um, in the word of God and investing in others, whether it be our literal children or uh, spiritual children, falls out to the furtherance of the inheritance that we have in Christ. As Tom was saying, the things that we do post-salvation, right? It's not just the, it's awesome to get saved and escape hell, but there's a lot more to it than that. God has an inheritance for us, and it's it's this time when we think about what it is to really inherit and claim that inheritance in eternal life. And so uh, if we do our job right, uh, of course, our children will also, um, they will end up inheriting eternal life and get the inheritance that God has for them. Of course, ultimately, it's on them ultimately. But mothers, we, we literally owe you our lives, and we want to honor you this morning. Uh, for if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be here, right? So uh, in honor of our mothers, what I'd like to do is just simply have a mother stand, grandmothers, mothers. Of course, if you're a grandmother, it means you're a mother. So if you just stand where you are right now, uh, we want to honor you. And uh, I think the, there's some ladies coming around with some gifts. This year it is, is it a pen this year, Amy? It's a pen. She's a pen freak, she says. So you get a little pen. But I want to. I want you to stay standing uh, as you receive these. And uh, normally I have you sit down, but I want you to stand. And then, um, all right, there you go. Mine is a little thumbnail thinking up on this. Um, as everyone, everyone receives a, a little blessing, let's just pray over these women. And uh, together, just stay standing, and um, we want to pray. I'll, I've got a few more folks here, so I want to make sure we get everything received here. Okay, let's let's have a word of prayer and ask a blessing on these dear ladies. Heavenly Father, we uh, come before your throne, and a little pen and an acknowledgement really isn't fitting enough for all that a mother goes through, all that a mother invests, Lord, in in uh, in your word and in investing in her children. God, I pray your your best blessings upon these women. I pray your protection upon them. I pray for the men in their lives, whether they be husbands, fathers, children. God, that we would honor, we would protect, we would cherish uh, these dear saints in our life. Lord, I pray, God, your, your, your best blessings upon them today, that they would enjoy this day that's set apart in our culture. I pray you would bless our culture. 
uh, for setting apart this day, God. We need as many blessings as we can find. And, Lord, we just thank you for these that are standing. And they represent life. And, Lord, you've given them uh, fruit. And, Lord, I pray, God, your blessing upon them and their posterity, Lord, their children, their grandchildren, uh, from generation to generation. Lord, may the word of God dwell in them richly. May the word of God dwell in their family members richly. May all their children come to faith in Christ and serve you with their whole heart. Lord, this is your will. And, Lord, I know this is their heart's desire, and we pray with them. We just thank you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen? Amen. There's one mother who couldn't be here this morning, and that is uh, Michelle Horton. But I have good news. She is sitting up drinking coffee on her own today. So hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. <laughs> Wherever you are, amen. That's God's. I told, uh, De- uh, tell, I told uh, James that's the power of the resurrection. And, uh, and so he's literally brought her off the, off the, the deathbed and uh, got her up and going again. So praise the Lord. So continue to pray for her. All right, well, uh, so we've been in the book of First and Second Timothy, and we've been talking about this Tim Talk series, and this morning I want to just circle back around and pick up some bread that I left on the table concerning Mother's Day, because this morning is a message on motherhood, and in the time I've got, I just want to just hit both Timothy and Titus, because both of the epistles mention the role of mothers, and so Timothy, uh, of course, receives this personal encouragement. From the, from, Tim, from the Apostle Paul, which you should be familiar with, if not, I'll refresh you in just a moment. In Titus chapter 2, we get a very practical application of motherhood, and we'll talk about that as well. But for us this morning, I pray that all of this is profitable, because I know everybody's got plans, right? Hopefully you're going to honor mom, or you're going to take out your wife, or you're going to do something. It's going to be a fun afternoon, beautiful weather, awesome. But before we do that, let's focus on the Word of God this morning. Let's allow God's Word to dwell in us richly. And if you have your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 1 is where I'm going to start off this morning. We're going to have two primary verses as we look at the message of motherhood. And if you don't have a Bible, in the seat in front of you is a rack, and on that rack or nearby should be a Bible. Grab out one of those Bibles, open it up to page 918, and uh, you can read with us as we look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. A familiar passage to us. It's really a springboard passage for the whole book that we've looked at thus far, but I want to go back and remember what it says. As the Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Heavenly Father, as we consider a discipleship, as we consider Timothy, as we consider mothers and reproduction and, and honoring mothers, God, we pray this morning a blessing on the reading and the hearing of your word. In the time that we have, Lord, I do pray that the word of God would go forth, that it would achieve its purpose, and Lord, it would only not only be personal and practical, but Lord, it would be profitable in our life. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, we honor you. We worship you as we've been singing. We truly lay our lives down, for you are worthy. And we thank you and praise you and ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So as we consider motherhood, I got a message for you, a message on motherhood. The first thing I want you to consider here is that motherhood should be honored. Motherhood should be honored. As we look at this passage, which we've already seen, Paul's given the final instructions to his son Timothy in the faith in this very personal letter. And we know that Timothy was imprisoned in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 23 because it says he got sprung, right? He got released from prison. So he'd endured some things. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't, he may have had a weak stomach, but he didn't have a weak constitution in the sense that when it came to faith, he was a faithful man, and he was a man. And so Paul is, is writing this epistle to move Timothy from fear to faith, and of course, if you've been around, I've been talking about the fruitfulness, right? The fruitfulness that continues to appear over and over in both First and Second Timothy in those patterns of nine, nine being the number, by the way, of months until a, b- a baby is typically born, right? And so... Uh, So when Paul seeks to find an example of faithfulness for his son in the Lord, of course, uh, it's Timothy. Uh, He says, Timothy, uh, I'm going to give you an example. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Don't do that because that would be a great selection, wouldn't it? Uh, Go to Hebrews 11. Let me tell you about all these faithful folks, Timothy. No, he didn't do that with Timothy. He says, Timothy, I want you to look at, at your mom and your grandma. It couldn't get any more personal or practical than that. He chooses his own mother and grandma. When you're looking for a hero in the faith, Timothy, go to grandma. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, go to grandma. Go to mom. Because as far as, I don't think it was just about Timothy. 
honoring them and respecting them. I think the Apostle Paul saw some things in them as well. So men, hang on to this message because I know you're wanting to tune me out because this is for mothers. No, it's for you too. So hang on with me as we go on. So what a position of honor. What a place to be recorded in all of eternity, Mom. And the word of God, could you imagine being Lois or you? I mean, here we are a couple thousand years later almost, and we're reading about these ladies that are noted for being faithful mothers, faithful grandmas. So these women, hey, they're nothing special, right? They're common women. Eunice had married a Gentile and would have had a child who would never receive the full standing as a Hebrew, right? Yet, for the, with, because of the grace of God, the faith of Eunice and Lois prevailed to bring forth fruit in their life. That's even greater than the promises that they ever received under the law as as Hebrews. And it was their faith in Christ that produced fruit that Paul was referring to. The fruit that was in the heart of Timothy and was evident to all. And I pray that it's in our hearts this morning. And so the story of many women throughout the Bible is very similar. Not all the moms had a great start. They didn't all come from a good place. Uh, Some were like harlots, like Rahab, right? And she's in the, the Messiah Highway. Some are enemies of God by birth. Ruth was a Moabitess, and yet she gets grafted in. Some are cast off and scorn like Tamar. Nobody wanted to give her the time of the day. She's ignored, and yet she also finds her way through Pharez. While others are vir- virtuous and strong like the Shulamite, there are barren mothers like Hannah and Sarah, Rebecca and Rachel. The struggles of giving birth, the barrenness. There are different scenarios all the way through the Bible. There are those fertile moms like Leah, and she had her problems too, ignored by her husband. And so there are many different characters and many different scenarios, but all those who follow God by faith, hey, they're worthy of honor. They're worthy of honor. And in a society that allows a minority to usurp uh, God's, uh, the God-given nature of sexuality and gender, and pervert everything. I mean, everything's all twisted up outside of the walls of this church. Outside in the society, things are getting all mishmashed up. Hey, we can stop and take a block of time and say, hey, praise God, we don't have to guess. We know how God designed it, and not only do we know how God designed it, we see examples among us. Hallelujah. And we rejoice in that, and we should rejoice in that. And so, It's important we honor mothers, especially biblical mothers who are full of faith, because we don't have enough of them. And and if if it were not for the faithfulness of a mother like Hannah, we would never have seen the faithfulness of a son like Samuel. It wouldn't have happened. So honoring motherhood is important for these following reasons, and I'm going to give them to you. Number one, a motherhood should be honored because it honors Scripture. It's a biblical concept. Jesus honored his mother Mary. Now, he didn't worship her. He didn't venerate her, okay? Mother, mother Mary was just, she was just a chick lot See, she was just a woman, and she was special, right? But she's not someone we worship. Jesus didn't worship her, but he did honor her. He did honor her. Uh, he honored his mother, though he never worshiped her. In the New Testament, mothers are, are to be honored. In the midst of all of his anguish, bearing the sin of the world, Jesus pauses to say, hey, John, take care of mom. In John 19, 26 through 27, you can look it up. And then saved men, right? If you're a saved man this morning, you should honor your mama. If you say, I'm born again, well, then you're not too big. You should honor your mama. I mean, there are guys in prison that honor their mama. You can honor your mama. And so, and I know this. Why? Because 1 Timothy 5, 8, the Bible says, But if any man provide not for his own, and especially of those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Okay? Now, I know you're used to hearing Muslims chant, you know, death to the infidel. And what does that really mean? Listen, that's a non-believer. So if you don't honor mama, if you say, I'm a Christian man, but you don't honor your mama, then you're worse than a lost man. As a matter of fact, if you start treating your mama like that, I guess I'll just treat you like you're lost. Because the Bible says if you're a saved man, you're going to honor mom. And, and then we should, we should honor mothers in the church. Why? Well, because Paul held both Timothy's Mom and grandma in high regard, as we just read. And he's not afraid to just say, hey, these women are worthy of honor. Timothy, you, when you grow up, you want to be like grandma. And then we should, we should also be careful to mind our tongue with, with the elder, elderly, equating uh, that to honoring them and respect. Because 1 Timothy 5, in verse 1, the Bible says, Rebuke not an elder. Now, this applies both to men and women. But entreat him as a father. And the younger men as brethren, the elder woman as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. 
honoring widows that are widows indeed. So in general, right, brethren, in the church, house, all the women that name the name of Christ, they're your sister. And all those that are elder women that are too old to be your sister, well, they're like your mama. And you're to handle all the women in the church house with purity. So there's no foxes in the chicken coop, right? Better not be, because it's my job to make sure that we honor women in the house, right? And so I don't think some of you are following me, but I hope you pick up on what I'm saying. All right? You don't kiss your sister until you get a ring. All right? So, okay. It sounds weird, I know. All right. So motherhood should be honored. That's pretty much common sense. That's actually a rerun. I've preached this in more depth before, but I wanted to run through that with you. But motherhood should be honored, not just because it's biblical, because it, but frankly, it's practical. It builds the family. It builds the family. Um. <clears throat> Motherhood should be honored because it builds the family. You wouldn't be here without her, right? You wouldn't, literally. The family unit isn't there without mom. So if your mother was not a very good mother, um, you can still honor her for that, at least that one thing, right? She did give birth. You may not like her for any other reason. Maybe she left you on the side of the road or something. I don't know. And it, I'm not, sadly, that's not a joke, right? There's babies in the trash can, the whole nine yards. But you know what? You can still honor that woman even. At least she gave birth. God used her as a vessel. You can at least honor her that much. But if honoring your mother builds the family, then dishonoring your mother, what's that going to do, beloved? It's going to hurt the family, isn't it? Matt, Matt, the YNS are here. Well, happy Mother's Day. I didn't see y'all. This just freaked me out. So, uh, all right. That's cool. So if, 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 if you build up the family, right, you honor mom, that builds things up, then what, obviously then when you dishonor mom, it's going to destroy things. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to hurt things. You're going you're gonna to hurt mom. Now, who hurts their mom? I remember when I was lost one time, uh, verbally assaulting my mom, so to speak, very lightly actually, but um, I was under the influence of alcohol, and I said something, and I just cut to the heart. I hurt her. And man, I tell you, I was so convicted. I wasn't saved yet even. I knew then, I'm like, man, that's not, that's not cool. You don't hurt mama like that. Because I know what I was, I reminded her of her father at that moment. And I just crushed her. Yeah, yeah, man, guys, that's not cool to hurt mom. It's not good at all. You should be ashamed of yourself. If you're one that abuses your mother, shame on you. Maybe we can get a bunch of us guys out back and we'll abuse you for a while and see how you like it. That's not in the notes. Okay, so <laughs> if honoring your mother builds a family, then okay, Proverbs twenty nine fifteen says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself, he's going to bring his mother shame. He's going to bring mama shame. He's going to bring her shame. The family is under attack today. Statistically, 40% of the women who start off in a marriage find themselves raising a child as a single mother. It's not just all women going out there getting pregnant, right? Some, a lot of the women that end up as single moms, they didn't ever start off thinking that was going to happen. It's not how they started the race. It's how they ended up. And they keep gutting it out. They keep going. 53% of men, you don't think about that. Not that I'm, but some, there's some men got to wear the hat of mom. Single dads that don't, that don't have a mom in the picture. 53% of them started off also in marriage. So I don't know what all the statistics are in the church. They're probably similar, but the marriage, the family motherhood is in under attack so is fatherhood of course so just like it was in the garden sin is leading is the leading cause of strife in any family so allowing another standard standard other than the word of god to rule our life results in a place for the adversary to attack so if you want to give place to the devil if you want to have problems in your family if you want to have problems in your relationships just don't follow god don't obey God. Just so give the devil a big old wide opening so he can drive a Mack truck of destruction into your life and blow it up with a, with a curbside bomb. That's what will happen. Guys, these things that, are, that we take for granted, we get some carnations. We th- By the way, the lady that, that got this whole ball rolling, she fought the rest of her life to stop it because it got so commercialized. <laughs> Mother's Day. She's like, no, that's not what I meant. Hey, listen, we can do it right because it's a biblical concept. It's something that builds the family. 
mothers, whether single or married, are on the front lines of the attack. And that's why it's even more important as the days grow darker that men honor their mothers and teach their children to do the same. The benefits are not just in eternity, but they're felt today. The reality is when we hand out gifts and we talk about motherhood and Mother's Day, there's some people hurting. There's some moms that aren't really moms, the desire of the heart that they haven't been able to fulfill. There's some folks that um, didn't get one good word from their son or their daughter. There's some people that are hurting. And beloved, that's why the church is here, which is the next, my next point. And before I get to that, there's practical ways to honor your mom on Mother's Day. Let me just give them to you real quick. Honor God, and then you'll honor your mom. You want to make your mom happy? Obey God. Just do what God tells you to do. Obey God. Honor, honor in deed and not in word only. Show your mother you love her by what you do. 1 John 3, 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. Sometimes mom just needs a hug. She just needs you to give her a call. She just needs you to, she just needs to know that you're there. And verbalize that love. Proverbs 31, 28 says, Her children arise up and call her blessed. She's, she does know everything you're thinking before you think it. But anyway, you need to say something to her. You need to say, hey, mom, I love you. Her husband also <laughs> prays with her. And for, unfortunately, we don't always have uh, our mothers with us our entire lives. So it's important that you verbalize that love and appreciation while you have them. For you know not what tomorrow will bring, and it'll be too late. So love them while you got them. And then uh, extend forgiveness. Show the love of Jesus by forgiving your mom. Now, if you're like me, I don't have anything to forgive my mom of. I'm just glad she put me here and she's done nothing to help me all the way along. But some of you, you know what? You're thinking, man, my mom's not worthy of my love because she's more like a harlot than a virtuous woman. And she doesn't look like a lot of the ladies that you, that you see standing around HPF. Well, that's just what you think. You may not know all the ladies standing around HPF. The reality is, is that the Lord Jesus Christ has an ability to do a work. And you know what? That work needs to start in us first. Um, I'm reminded, and I'll remind you, that Bathsheba, sitting at the right hand of her son on the throne, she was an adulterous woman. That's how he was conceived. So you, you, you may be right. Perhaps the only love your mother will ever re truly receive is that lasting love that comes from forgiveness. She's never going to give you the love that you deserve, maybe naturally. Maybe you got that skipped over. And this is up, and increasingly as the days go on, there's a lot of you like that. And I understand that. But you know what? God has built the church. He gives you surrogate moms. He gives you adopted moms. He gives you the ability to grow up and also to get over it and heal. We just sang a song about it. He can heal those scars. Why? Because, well, he loved us first. So you can take the example of a heavenly father who loves you, and then you can apply that to mama. And you can love her first, even if she didn't love you back or won't love you back. If there's anything between you and your mother, get it right. And don't allow the devil to have a place in your relationship with your mom. Because if you're an adult, you've got to get over that childhood stuff through faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to have faith. And don't allow someone else's sin to destroy your life because the root of bitterness will spring up and defile everybody. So apply the word of God. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Maybe today, Mother's Day for you is a day of forgiveness, a day of grace where you reflect on the grace that God has given you, and then you give that grace to someone else. Not because they deserve it, but because you don't deserve it, right? And you give to others what you didn't deserve as well. All right, next point. Mother, motherhood should be honored because it builds the church. This is evident in the text this morning. It was the faithful example of Lois and Eunice that Paul was using to encourage Timothy to emulate. He's like, grow up and be like grandma. And so it's a faithful mother that does the groundwork to produce a faithful man. Let me say that twice. It is the faithful mother that does the groundwork to produce, to produce a faithful man. It's much harder to get a 2 Timothy 2.2 2 man if we don't have a 1 Timothy 1, 5 through 6 woman in the background raising up that young child in the way he should go. And so we honor mothers on Mother's Day because we know that this, like in this place, in this church, in these families, in the church house, the church house is going to be better off when moms are being moms and they're investing in the kids because they're being faithful moms. That results in faithful men. 
It's not always glamorous. It's not always sexy. It's not about a big curriculum that you put together or how many devotions that you labored over on Tuesday night or whatever. It is, it is, about, it is about the investment day in and day out of a mother, and of course, and a father in the children as they grow up. And that's why we emphasize discipleship at HBF, because you cannot develop your faith. In a, you can't develop others' faith, I'm sorry, if you have none. Rex was just talking about that. That's why we disciple. It's not just so you can learn some more information and your life is better. That's good, but it's also so that you can reinvest. I love what Rex is saying. So he can disciple others also. Hey, some of the first folks we need to be discipling are our children. We need to invest the word of God in them. And so motherhood should be honored um, <clears throat> because it builds society as well. It builds the family, it builds the church, and it builds society. Children left to themselves don't get any better. Uh, children need parents, not a nanny state, right? I'm telling you, you don't want a village raising your kids. You want to raise your child. Uh, if you let them, they'll take them. So as, family, as, a, as the family structure erodes, so does society. And we see in the United States, it's nothing new. We've already seen it before in ancient Rome, ancient Greece, and even in Israel, if we read the Old Testament. We see what happens when family breaks down. And society uh, does not honor the roles of mother and father. And then the children get thrown under the bus. The next thing you know, you're tossing the kids in Balaam's arms as they're getting burnt up in Molex, you could say. And Molex, the babies are getting tossed into Molex's big old belly and getting burnt up at the fire so we can worship some false god. No different than the abortion mills in the USA today, so we can worship the almighty dollar. Hey, now judgment begins at the house of God. I know some of you participate in abortion. And I know right now the devil wants to condemn you. But I'm telling you right now that this is a day where you can set that aside because of the grace of God. Jesus has already paid for all of our sin. So we need to go out of here. We need to go, wow, man, God is making us change agents. And he's doing that in our hearts, in our family, in our, in our church, and in our, in our society. And it's you, the salt and the light in this room, who stand in the gap and make up the difference alongside the millions Speaking of Baal, who haven't bowed their knee to Baal. Man, I'm excited about Mother's Day for some reason. Why? Because I know it's going to produce faithful men. We're able to teach others also. So i got to get done because we're about out of time. i got one more point, so listen to this. Motherhood should be honored because it's biblical. It builds families, the church, and society. But motherhood should also be modeled. Turn over to Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Titus 2, 3 through 5. Not every situation is ideal. And perhaps you find yourself in a situation that's not ideal. And that's where Titus found himself. The many, the many cities scattered throughout the mountains, mountainous terrain of Crete offered all kinds of challenges, all kinds of strongholds for the devil to work in and among. But the reality is, is that these are some rough folks. Titus 1.10 the Apostle Paul writing says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole, there's the target, houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of them, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies, meaning they're big old fat dudes that look like they're nine months pregnant. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply for... Uh, that they may be sound in the faith. See, it was in an environment like that that Paul called on the elder men and the women to model the things which become sound doctrine. It takes sound doctrine, right, to, ha to be sound in the faith. And it's not enough to know what the Bible says. It's got to be modeled. It's got to be lived out. It's not enough just to have the right information, right? We've got to have a visible application. And so that is the environment in which Paul teaches and preaches. Now look down here in verse 3 of chapter 2. Not to skip over the men, but for time's sake, I'm just going to focus on the ladies. Paul gives instruction to Titus, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holy, holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, to be obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not, or wait, word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. And so as you look at this passage, you can see some models. Number one here, there's a model of holiness. There's a model of holiness. Uh, <clears throat> that that uh, God, 
wants a, God, God wants the, the, the godly women, I'm sorry. He wants mothers to, motherhood to model holiness so God looks good. That's what I'm trying to say. He wants, he wants motherhood to model holiness so God looks good. You see that in verse 3. The, let the aged women likewise, that they, be, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Now, when it says becometh holiness, we don't talk much like that anymore. But what's he talking about? Well, Paul is listing out basically what holiness doesn't look like. And he says, I want you all to make holiness look good. If you're an elder woman, you've kind of you've already raised your children. I'm not going to put an age on it, but get to that point now. You're probably getting to be empty nested, being a grandma. You've had some experience. He says, you know what? You need to make holiness look good. The list here is short. It's kind of like that whole, you know, you might be a redneck list, right? So if you accuse people falsely and you're not, then you're, you're not modern. You're, you're probably not modeling motherhood. You're like, this is a contract. It's completely different than what you see with Eunice and Lois. This is, this is what you don't want to be. It's possible, possible somebody came to the house this morning and you're like, well, am I okay? Well, I don't know. Let's just look at what the Bible says. But I, I mean, it, really, are we modeling holiness? Well, what's that look like? Well, are you a false accuser? Do you like to accuse people falsely? Well, no, you're not modeling holiness. Hey, are you a lust? Do you like to tip the bottle? Maybe a little bit of extra pain medica- medication, a pill popper. You're a little bit out of it. You can't take care of the kiddos. Hey, listen, you hitting the meth pipe? You're not a model mother. I don't care what you tell yourself. You're kidding yourself. You need help. And by the way, we're here to help you with that too. God loves you anyway. And God, you can get the grace that you need. Uh, hey, if you teach evil things, you're not modeling motherhood. That's not, that's not the model. Uh, and that's not only in word only, right? It's amazing how, you know, motherhood is just kind of like taught. It's not just taught. I'm, I was with my Aunt Becky this week, and uh, I'm like, literally, it's like, she turned into my grandma. I'm like, what happened? She laughed like her. She talked like her. She got impatient like her. Everything. I was just like, wow. It's like she's a, du- a duplicate. And uh, it was just made me laugh on the inside. I, I didn't say anything on the outside. But uh, it was just hilarious. I'm like, wow, that's like a complete mini photocopy. So women, it's not all just taught. Some of it's taught. Hey, and if you, if a woman honors God, you know what? She'll be honored. It's a pretty short list there, but it's pretty profound. Model holiness so younger women can follow your example. Not only to make God look good, but you know what? To help others understand what they need to look like. It should, should be a model. Teach your younger women so that the word of God is not blasphemed. If you skip right to the end of verse uh, verse 5, you find the reason why these things need to be modeled. So the word of God is not blasphemed. So people don't think you're a hypocrite, a joke, a loser, right? They, so that the word of God has some, some, uh, some credibility. Can you believe God uses you to extend his credibility? That doesn't make sense, but you know what? He does. He wants to use you to make his word credible. And you're like, well, his word's credible without me. I know. It doesn't need us. But yet he chooses it to work this way. Why? Because you're intricately involved in winning people to Christ or not. And that's up to you. And I'm talking to the saved. And so teach the younger women so the word of God is not blasphemed. If you look at the beginning of Titus chapter 2 and verse 4 and cut to the, all the particulars, you're going to find out um, that that's exactly what he's talking about. God's attached his credibility to you. So godly, experienced uh, <clears throat> mothers and grandmothers, They have all this education, and they need to use it to help the younger women, to teach them how to be sober in every way, how to love their husbands. You know that's mentioned a couple times there? Uh, Because, you know, after the honeymoon, that's not easy to do. You might need some help on that. Go talk to a woman who's done it. How to love their children, even when they just played jump rope with your last nerve, right? If they didn't just step on it, they picked it up and started twirling it, you know? I need help. That's what the elder women are here for. How to be discreet, sober, sound-minded. How to have a good head on your shoulders. Sometimes you feel like it's going to explode. I remember when, when the kids are really little, literally, mom's got to hide in the bathroom just to get alone time, just to read the Bible in peace. Hey, it's tough being a mom, no doubt about it. Men just try it sometime. You think it's funny? How to be chaste. That means keeping yourself pure and undefiled. Hey, man, not just the men go off the tracks here. Women do too, increasingly with the Internet. And so I tell you what, 
Keep it together. Keep it focused on the Lord and your husband. And how to keep be keepers at home. The trick uh, to the homemaking, all that homemaking trade, which I know nothing of. All right? So all of that stuff is to be modeled. How to be good. How to be obedient to their, by the way, own husband. Right? You don't want to go out here and love up on your boss and do everything he wants you to do and do everything that everybody else wants you to do, and then you go home and diss up on your husband. Man, that's not right. That's not modeling. That's not the model God wants. So it's Mother's Day. Some of us need a model. Some of us need maybe, and I'm not one to speak. I'm not a mother. But if you need a, a mother to help model that, that's what HBS for too. Not just discipleship and 16 lessons so you can get the precise doctrinal uh, teaching, which you do need all of that, but you also need living epistles and examples. Because we live in a world that's wrecked and it's shipwrecked. And so we are here to see people uh, come to faith. When you have mothers like Lois and, and Eunice, not all of them come from perfectly pristine backgrounds. Some of them have issues, but they've seen God's grace work it out so that, they, so that, so that you can learn and you can grow. And so the mus- message of motherhood is simple. Mothers should be honored, and motherhood should be modeled. It should be honored, and it should be modeled. So not only do we, should men honor mothers and children honor mothers, but you know what? Mothers need to honor Mother's Day as well. And so with that, what's the takeaway? What's the takeaway this morning? See, I believe God highlights both motherhood and Timothy and Titus to show us something else. Number one, of course, if you're a mother, which one are you? Are you the faithful one? Or are you the one over in Crete who needs some work? I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. But why is it so important? I told you men not to tune out. and I want you to tune back in. It's important because even the big, burly, ugly, godly men need an example in motherhood say what yeah we do see i don't think paul just took note of these women uh timothy's mom and grandma because he was just focused on timothy though i think that was obviously important to him i think paul personally drew encouragement i don't know who he had in his life to help him but i know this he 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 definitely looked at those two ladies and he says man when it comes right down to it timothy i don't know anybody that i could use as a model to encourage you any more than these two women now, why would Paul be have an affinity for that? Well, I believe it's pretty simple because he was, a, he was an apostle and he was in care of the churches. And he understood that the, the church had a lot of the same needs as, as a family, as, as a woman would provide. Because in 1, Timoth- 1 Corinthians 3, 2, he says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. See, Paul, he was picking up some things on how to feed with milk. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile, 1 Peter 2, 1 through 2, and hypocrisies and envyings and evil despisings, as newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Where's Paul going to learn how to give milk? How's he going to learn to care for young Christians? He's going to look at Lois. He's going to look at Eunice. 1 Thessalonians 2, 7, he says to the church at Thessalonica, but we were gentle among you even as a nurse cherisheth her children yeah the big bad apostle paul the guy that stood before nero when it came to the kids in the lord in the church house he was gentle he was gentle as a nurse cherisheth her her children in hebrews 5 12 for when uh, for a time when you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Hey, there's a lesson here to all the men in the church. He said, listen, these faithful women, they, they bring a certain touch, a certain sincere milk, a certain faith that we need to make sure we invest in all the young believers in the Lord Jesus Christ so we can have faithful men who are able to teach others also. You don't just cookie cutter your disciples. It all requires individual attention. Any mom will tell you that. Each one of the kids are different. You know how they know that? Because they have to learn to to deal with each child differently so that they can all grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we are so